We are very excited to have him present today. He is an expert on this, so hopefully he can give you some very valuable information on hosted SharePoint. If you are logged on, you should all be able to see the title slide, Benefits of Hosted SharePoint. And unfortunately, because of our technical difficulties, we cannot run the video, so I'm going to briefly go over a few of the key features of live meetings. To ask a question, you go up to the Q&A button. It's on the top left side of your screen. Click on the Q&A verbiage located in that toolbar. Type your question and then click the Ask button. We encourage you to ask questions throughout the session, but we will hold them until the end. We'll also be using the seating chart feature within Live Meeting. Changing your feedback color within this tool helps give us feedback for the presenter and myself. To provide the feedback, click on the feedback menu found in the upper right-hand corner of your screen, select the feedback color, and your seat in the conference center will display your selected color. Lastly, this webcast is being recorded and will be available via the Nudesic website. We will email you when the link is available. If everyone is ready, please set your color to green, and I think Simeon looks like he is ready as well, so I will pass it over to Simeon. Well, thanks, Meredith. Appreciate the intro. Um, thanks for, uh, for joining, folks. And again, I apologize for the, uh, the live meeting technical difficulties here. It looks like we've got it uh, fixed, so should be good to go. Uh, the topic for today is the benefits of hosting hosted SharePoint, SharePoint 2010. Um, my uh, my role at New Desk, like the reason I'm presenting is um, I'm currently my new role, I guess, is the general manager of our portals and collaboration practice. So I'm responsible for our SharePoint strategy uh, nationwide. Now my my second role is the GM of our managed services team, which is in charge of providing uh, SharePoint hosting capabilities to our customers. And so um, that's, that's sort of why I'm the one giving the presentation and kind of put the deck together. Um, a little, little bit about me, a little bit of past history. I started at Microsoft um, as a Microsoft full-time employee in 1998. I ended up uh, working uh, for a team of, of a small team of, of folks <coughs> that were at the time uh, kind of a, a startup inside of Microsoft trying to revolutionize the way information workers share, share, uh, share information. At that time, it was pretty much email and file shares, and so we built a server system that eventually became what's now called SharePoint, and, uh, and um, which has grown quite rapidly. So I've got um, some, some old school experience, and plus I ended up uh, co-authoring the SharePoint Bible, 2007 Bible, for Wiley Publishing. And then I started my own consulting company doing hosted SharePoint. So now that uh, myself and my, my, my old team are all um, here at New Desic, we're happy to share uh, some of the benefits of, of hosted SharePoint with you today. So the agenda is going to go somewhat like this. Um, I've got some deployment scenarios I'll go through just to sort of um, put some color around the different ways that you can deploy SharePoint. Um, some of the, the benefit of hosted environments. Uh, regarding temporary environments, and I'll talk, talk, talk kind of in depth about that. We've seen some great benefits to that uh, from a hosting perspective. Um, some of the cost savings that you can experience using uh, hosted SharePoint over time. And um, we'll go through some, some information on, on how we can scale very easily and meet your business needs. And then maintenance and tuning, uh, sort of the typical care and feeding that a SharePoint deployment requires. And finally, our uh, how managed services might be able to help you out as well. So to get started, I'm going to talk about a few different deployment scenarios. Now, the one that people are typically used to hearing about, and maybe you've, you've deployed this way as well, um, because of the value that the SharePoint 2010 and, and uh, previous versions of SharePoint bring to the table just out of the box, a typical deployment might be um, on-premise, to serve employees around different departmental and task needs or information sharing and collaboration needs. So <clears throat> the, the typical environment there is on-premise. Um, it's hosted by internal IT and presented to um, employees on an as-needed basis. Um, and then um, as you start expanding your business, and depending on what your business um, your business uh, processes are, you may want to expose that information or, or create collaboration between your employees and the people on the other side of the firewall, like um, partners and, and vendors. 
Uh, Microsoft's a great example of this. Microsoft's business counts on their partners and their vendors to take their, their products to market, build solutions, and provide value to customers. Um, if your business has the same, this same scenario where you have a partner channel and you, you, you can see value in connecting your employees in corporate um, with your partners and vendors, an extern is another uh, potential deployment. Now, that deployment could, all, could be internally hosted by an IT, um, like, like the typical intranet. intranet. Um, but both of these scenarios can also be served very well in a hosted environment. Now, the last um, kind of audience here is uh, we bring customers into the picture. Now, some businesses are purely web-based businesses where customers are the only folks who need the capabilities of the SharePoint platform. Um, but what we're seeing more and more as businesses start um, becoming more competitive and sort of diversifying their functions and um, capabilities, and especially with a platform like SharePoint 2010, bringing so many valuable assets to the table in terms of services and functionality, um, there's a growing need and growing awareness of the value of having all of these different um, audiences working together. Now, opening up your firewall to your on-premise environment, um, there's a lot of things to consider. Now, there are companies around the globe who specialize specifically in hosting SharePoint deployments for all of these audiences and really revolutionizes the way people work together um, digitally. So I'll go through and um, talk a little bit about some of those. Um, one of our key customers that we've really helped kind of transform the way they do business is Microsoft, and I'll show you guys an example of that here in, uh, here in just a little bit. Now, this slide is a slide I stole from uh, Microsoft Slide Deck, and this um, basically just illustrates that, uh, you know, on-premise, you've really got that control and ownership from the hardware level all the way through the application stack all the features, uh, business uh, business solutions that you might be building on top of the platforms. Um, and, and then you, if you add hosted services to this, and hosting SharePoint 2010 specifically, that allows you to, to scale rapidly. Now, you might feel like you lose that control and ownership, and that may feel like that's the case. But with the way that SharePoint 2010 has been built, the controls are still at your fingertips. The things that you really lose are maintaining, you know, the moving parts, the stuff we all, you know, lose sleep over, and that's the, you know, hard drives and fans and, you know, network routers, those sorts of things. <clears throat> with a hosted environment, those things kind of go away and give you the ability to really focus on the value of bringing customers and employees and, and partners all together in a collaborative space. So um, with the new with SharePoint 2010, uh, new version of Exchange, Office 2010, and CRM 5, a lot of these um, all of these these server class products, enterprise products, are all now really being built with this in mind, being able to put all of those systems up in the cloud and take advantage of sort of um, making the, the infrastructure and even to an extent the technology kind of disappear. Um, and, and, you know, what we see with people who take advantage of these capabilities is IT being, being able to rekindle that relationship and have those conversations with the business and really being able to partner up truly and add, add to business value. Um, <clears throat> so on the topic of temporary environments, um, this is a, a concept that, um, that's sort of near and dear to my heart, especially um, with my experience in product development and application lifecycle. Uh, being able to have instant on environments and, and to really just tailor the environments to what you really need instead of having to go plan for, you know, the next two or three years and buying all of that hardware. Um, now you can just have instant on environments and tailor a hosted system to exactly what you need. And, and this, these, these chevrons here that go from left to right, I kind of tried to illustrate, you know, this is your typical kind of platform adoption um, um, roadmap. The first thing you do is kind of evaluate a system and train. Again, we have, you could have an instant on hosted in the cloud environment that's exactly like you would expect on premise. Um, and then you might move into sort of the, the demo that to your executives, get executive buy on, buy in on the value proposition that the platform, um, like SharePoint 2010 brings to the table. <clears throat> the next step, once you kind of get that buy in in your plan, maybe you know, to start developing and testing some functionality that's related to your business needs, and then finally piloting um, some of that, rolling that 
that system and that, that new capability out to a small set of users and getting some, some good feedback. And then finally, as you're still doing it, you're testing and your development and rolling new features in, you move into a staging environment and, um, and then finally, um, production and that, you know, your production systems ends up being your high availability, high capacity system. Now, all the way through, you'll see I kind of highlighted in, in the background a box around those first five. And those are areas where we've seen some of the largest companies in the world working with us and Microsoft take advantage of uh, <clears throat> hosted environments, um, uh, giving people an instant on environment where they can just go evaluate the new features in SharePoint 2010 is a huge win. Uh, SharePoint 2010, as you, as you may or may not know, requires a 64-bit operating system. So if you, it, a lot of IT departments are finding that they have to go out and just buy net new hardware. Well, being able to, you know, call a company like Nudesic or another hoster or hosting provider and within 20 minutes have a full enterprise SharePoint 2010 environment up is, is, is a really big value add. There's really low investment, instant on, and you can start evaluating and training. And the same goes for the rest of these. Um, the demo environments, uh, we host uh, um, many, many environments, uh, development environments. A lot of our developers at Nudesic, <clears throat> They can work from anywhere as long as they have an internet connection. And instead of having to run, you know, a system um, locally on their laptop to develop, uh, they just remote desktop into a hosted environment that's available to them 24-7 and start developing on an enterprise class deployment of SharePoint, being able to deploy, uh, debug, and test on the fly. So there's, there's a lot of value to, to the statement. Now, as you go through this life cycle, you'll probably start you maybe not needing some of these servers that you've invested in. For example, maybe you're training your evaluation. Once you're done with evaluating, maybe you can just start turning some of these servers off over time. Now, on an internal IT, you can you may turn things off and recoup uh, some of your resources, and then you have to kind of think about well, how do I get the best value out of these systems and and make sure that the money you've paid for these on-premise deployments or, or server infrastructure can be used other ways. Now, that's not a bad problem to have, having extra server resources, but having to, you know, justify that spend is just an extra thing to think about. So we find customers now who, um, who and, and, and some, 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 some of the largest customers in the world, in fact, really taken advantage of being able to quickly turn on a, a server and have a, a small development team go build a prototype over, you know, <clears throat> two or three months, present it to, you know, core, the core IT department, and, um, and then start and then move forward with the full blown application lifecycle management uh, processes. Now, speaking of that, I, I'm going to do a little Nudesic plug here. <laughs> um, if you do, if you're one of those people out there who finds value in one of those instant on environments, we have two offers today. Microsoft is, and, and, and Nudesic together have rolled this out nationally, and we've had great adoption um, with, with uh, our customers um, in the enterprise space. And that's um, the silver one is a development suite. It's, it really is instant on. In fact, we have a dozen of these environments just sitting in a virtual hosted environment that one phone call later, the environment is on, and we give you a nice warm handoff, and we plug you in with people who can, uh, who can help you answer questions on an ongoing basis. So, you know, a 30-day POC to get to know SharePoint 2010 if you can't um, do that uh, internally. I was just in a meeting yesterday in Southern California, and it was a large healthcare company, and I asked them, I said, would there be value in having a, an environment you can start poking at and playing with now? Because they're sitting behind a budget um, uh, calendar and planning. They won't have their infrastructure ready for at least another six months. So they're able to take advantage of this, um, of this, this offer. Now, um, an earlier slide I talked about, uh, people work, being able to work together, whether they're corporate employees, vendors, customers, uh, or partners. Um, these are a couple of screenshots that I threw in here for, well, two reasons. One is just to show that, you know, these are hosted solutions. Each one of these are hosted by um, a hosting provider, and the businesses that own these websites, <coughs> some of them are internet-facing only, some are extranet. Um, some of these uh, 
they, they don't have to worry about the IT. They have a team behind them, of SharePoint experts, behind these sites that are managing them at a fraction of the cost. Um, I want to show you guys actually one of these sites to really kind of illustrate the value um, of having that hosted um, hosted experience and having somebody else manage it. Now, the team that manages Microsoft Online Services, which is a big cloud strategy that Microsoft is promoting and building on um, over the last few years and really going to market with now, um, and it, it's kind of ironic that this site actually is a promotion of hosted services. Um, this is to build the partner network, Microsoft partner network globally, around the online hosted services, Exchange CRM, Unified Communications, and SharePoint, and, and more. Um, now this site, I'm just going to go over here and show you guys this site live. Now, this is a hosted SharePoint enterprise environment. The go-to-market on this, to get this done, if the, this team would have went to internal IT at Microsoft, and I'm not saying Microsoft's internal IT is a, a bad team. They're a wonderful team, and they're such a good team that they have this huge backlog of people needing services. Well, um, they came to us and said, hey, can you, you know, what are the options we could do with a hosted environment? And it was a very quick conversation. Um, about four weeks later, we had an enterprise uh, SharePoint farm up and running um, within and live and custom tailored to, to have Microsoft partners log in through partners and custom, I'm sorry, partners and Microsoft employees logging into the same environment <coughs> um, um, for as low as fifty thousand dollars in the in the first um, the first iteration hosting is around around forty thousand dollars a year for that enterprise um, server environment to go internally to an IT department that would have ranged anywhere from a um, hundred thousand dollars to start up and ninety to a hundred thousand dollars a year just to host and maintain so going external sometimes makes a lot of sense forgetting about the hardware I want to show you really quickly how a system like this, using SharePoint, to bring those different audiences together is so valuable. From an external, public-facing perspective, Microsoft is able to have a nice public look and feel sitting out there to kind of entice the Microsoft partners around the business value of working with Microsoft in their, in their partner program. Um, there's a community area. This is all public-facing, so this all gets... Um, is indexed by uh, Bing and Google and that sort of thing. Um, now, but as soon as there's um, some content that should really only be seen by people who have um, signed a partner agreement or part of that 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 program, once they get to that point, they can they're required to sign in to get into that you know premium content. So we've done you know some integration with Live ID. A separate, unit, a separate web service that connects up to the database, a directory of Microsoft partners we can validate that the, who those people are. Um, down here we have a Microsoft internal registration login um, so that Microsoft employees can come in as well. And real quick, I'll just show you what that, kind of what that looks like on, on a hosted SharePoint environment. So now I'm using Windows Live ID integrated with hosted SharePoint. Um, it's logging me into the system. It's checking my ID. It knows who I am. If I go to my profile over here, it's going to load my personal profile about who I am around uh, in, in the partner program, so which company I'm with, my contact information, all sorts of uh, information about me. It says that I'm an executive. I'm in marketing. I can actually change my role here, and the content around the site will automatically um, be delivered to me. So we got some audience targeting, and it, the system is giving me information that's relevant to me in my role. Um, I can select to be notified if anything changes on the site, just normal things that you can do inside of SharePoint. And as I click on the same tabs that I saw before, you see that we have premium content showing up. Now, a Microsoft employee can come in here and, and on, on SharePoint, update this, this content in an instant where working with normal internal IT would have taken sometimes three to six weeks just to update a paragraph. So um, they can come in here and, you know, add, add content on the fly and have it immediately show up to the global partner community. So some really good value there in having a quick turnkey hosted environment that the business 
in this case, really didn't even have to talk to the IT department. They were able to still plug in and integrate with existing systems and leverage investments that the company's already made, but also go to market quickly and get the support they needed to get out in front of their competition. A pretty cool uh, example of that here. Uh, log out there. And go here. So there's one example. Now, on that previous previous slide that I showed you guys, there, there's a bunch of examples. If you guys have any questions, you're welcome to send us um, emails or ask questions at the end. We can walk through those. Now, the next item on the agenda is to talk a little bit about the cost savings that you'll find uh, with a hosted SharePoint solution. And this is, you know, this is going to be different depending on, you know, who you go with. And so what I've done is, um, and, and what features you want. But I just want to put together a really generic example just to illustrate the kind of, um, the, the, the kind of savings you can actually, um, you can, you can, you'll, you can see. So this is kind of a typical SharePoint deployment that runs, um, if you were to do it in-house, if I were to do it for my company, um, would run me about $217,000 for the first year. Okay, now that's, that means I have to get the servers together, I have to get the licenses, I have to build up, you know, my infrastructure. I'm sure you guys probably already have a lot of the stuff like your UPS backups and um, your routers and that sort of thing. But <clears throat> the true cost of a deployment is all of these things added together. Um, um, you'll see that the, the largest item on this chart is staffing. And to find SharePoint talent today, and I live this every day as I build um, a premier, the premier SharePoint practice nationwide for, my, for our company, um, that it's really hard to find truly good SharePoint talent. Now, I know that there's a lot of hosting companies out there, and in some cases, hosting SharePoint in just some data center somewhere where people don't know about SharePoint, you would still need to have this staffing. But the, the, the comparison I'm doing here is if you were to actually use someone like us, where um, four of the people on our SharePoint team that actually manage our data centers and our cloud computing for SharePoint are actually ex-Microsoft SharePoint team members. So in this case, that staffing cost can go all the way down to nearly zero because we, we can provide the level of expertise um, beyond, well, I can, I, I can say, I can confidently say, beyond most companies around the world. Um, so that, that cost is driven down significantly. Um, the gap here is you could, you could really legitimately say on a typical deployment of SharePoint 2010 for your business, over $1,000 for the first year. So now those savings don't stop in the first year. There's a lot of investment that happens year one. You can actually save nearly the same year over year. You see that the hosting is the only cost with a hosting um, a hosting provider, and typically a hosting provider will provide within that little um, within the bird hosting other a lot of other services like some support, uh, maintenance, updates, you know, service packs, uh, reporting, those sorts of things. So when I have hosting listed there, I should have sort of expand that out into a few other things. Now you still have costs internally, with again staffing being a, a, a large one. Um, and your connectivity and other things, but um, uh, depending on your deployment, you could potentially save over ninety ninety thousand um, dollars year after year with a hosted solution. Again, I want to mention that I put some numbers together. Everybody's situation may be different. You may have SharePoint people on staff, so you want to take those consider things into consideration before you think consider. But I'm just saying <laughs> that this is how much you would save. Definitely, there are a lot of variables that play into it. Um, but if you want to have that conversation and, and, and do some of that thinking, we're certainly happy to help you um, help you figure out where you could save uh, uh, money and time and increase your operational efficiencies. Now, another beautiful thing about a hosted solution is you only pay for what you use. So you don't pay for the servers that are laying around waiting to be used. Um, and, and, and you can add, you can just add resources on the fly. So um, the more people that you have using the system, whether you open it up from just internal only to vendors and customers, um, you can have resources added immediately and start scaling to, to the nth degree. Um, the cloud and hosters provide massive amounts of resources to put, um, to answer the call of, of your business. So 
um, as that as your as your user adoption or your your your, uh, your business grows, you can start putting out bringing in more servers to adapt to um, to those needs. And so instead, again, instead of having to do that five-year planning, you can plan for now maybe six, 12 months out, knowing that one of your one phone call away from adding, doubling the size of your server farm and load balancing across that entire infrastructure without actually paying for it. Now, the opposite could be true as well. Maybe you've got a campaign where you want to drive a lot of traffic into a system and collect a bunch of, of data or demographics or that sort of thing, but it's a short-term project. Maybe it's a six-year or a six-month campaign. So the opposite is true. You can start turning things off over time and start um, saving, you know, and start re um, um, cutting your costs down. Um, another uh, another uh, benefit here too is that there's some flexibility around how much you pay. So as users come on board with uh, uh, service provider licensing, uh, subscription-based licensing for SharePoint, um, we can do things like license 10 users and then add another user the next month and another user the next month and five users the next month. And the actual spend, you can start forecasting accurately how where, where your costs are going to go, um, and adapt, and, that, and your costs adapt to your actual need. So it's a really interesting thing to consider um, as you're thinking about your SharePoint deployment. Using um, hosted service providers can really open up uh, a, um, um, a lot of uh, sort of budgeting questions. So again, if you need help with that, we're, we're happy to sit down and have that conversation with you. <clears throat> The sort of final main point I want to point out here is um, you, if you're the person who's responsible for your infrastructure and your SharePoint deployment, can finally start sleeping again, which is really a necessity if you want to be healthy. So I encourage you to really consider SharePoint hosting as a viable solution for you. Um, if you if you have any risk questions or if you have any um, questions about integration, how systems connect to each other and talk, I'd love to have those conversations because when you get to start having those conversations and the business conversations, instead of worrying about the updates and service packs and upgrades and what's coming down from Microsoft this week or the critical updates or your backup and restore or the latest version or other systems that need to integrate with, um, you can turn pieces and parts of these systems on and off and in the cloud and, and, and hosting, especially with SharePoint 2010 and its new sandbox capabilities and new deployment um, facilities and management systems, you can really sort of let go of all of the things that would normally stress you out and keep you up at night. Um, and, and you can get reports from your hosting provider as well on a monthly basis. They can give you recommendations on um, how, uh, how your system is doing, or, or give you recommendations based on how your system is doing and how users are adopting particular applications and give you inputs like, um, at least at least I can speak confidently about my, my team, if we go to our customers and say things like, hey, you know what, we noticed that there's certain content here that's really just not being, um, that's really not being utilized, and if you updated your navigation a little bit, you might find that people get more value out of it. Or things like um, we're noticing that this particular application and this integration point is, has some performance issues. And if you, you know, wrote a new WC, a WCS service um, and connected that to this other system, we could really optimize that experience and provide uh, better data more quickly to your end users. So um, you get some experts behind the scenes providing some added value as well. So instead of having to, you know, buy all of the servers, hire the top uh, SharePoint guys out there, which are hard to find because I stole them all, um, <laughs> um, you get to actually, you know, um, rest knowing that your new conversations are really with the business and adding value there. Now, I want to... Um, talk a little bit about Indesic Managed Services. Um, there's, there is sort of generic benefits around hosted SharePoint that I've kind of talked about. Um, but there's additional services that you'll find in the marketplace. Um, our managed services team brings some of those services to bear and it's kind of creating a, a much nicer story. Instead of just a commoditized kind of, you know, here's some processors, what do we call ping, pop, and power, all that server infrastructure and network. We can actually provide a lot of additional services like um, helping plan global deployments if you've got a uh, business that's 
um, that are spread around, you know, different regional places that can help make sure that the hosted environments are uh, prepared to support the different different areas. Um, we can help you, you know, kind of outsource that, um, your data test training and pilot environments, and even production environments. We have multi, many, many server farms today that are uh, specifically designed for production. And it's actually kind of interesting. The application lifecycle management piece that I mentioned earlier, we practice on a daily basis on our hosted infrastructure. Because as customers see the value of, of, of hosted SharePoint, they be, also begin asking us, to build custom solutions for them on that hosted platform. And so um, what you find, what we find is that we're bringing up dev, and dev development environments with Team Foundation Server and Code Management System built into that hosting environment, um, uh, test environments and staging environments and production environments and managing the entire application lifecycle for companies. They're finding that it's actually easier, and since we're internal to that environment and we own it, manage it, and run it, our consultants and our analysts who are building uh, these applications, working with our managed services team, can really effectively and safely push um, new functionality and new business value all the way through that application lifecycle and finally into the production environments. And in some cases, those production environments are on-premise and sometimes they're actually hosted by us or up in, up in um, uh, the Amazon cloud, for example. And we also provide um, application um, all the way from the application level, from a stored procedure, all the way um, to a user control to end user support. So where users may have uh, questions about the environment, um, we can help build knowledge internally within companies by providing that frontline support. If somebody needs to know how to add a document library to a page, we'll help them walk through the process for their first time, or we'll point them to articles that can help them out. So. Um, if somebody finds an error message in an application, that can get escalated right back up to the team who can support it um, in near real time. So um, some, some really nice benefits there. We also set up active monitoring um, so that, and, and we do that at everything from the typical things you would imagine, like disk space, um, CPU thresholds, and networks, that sort of thing, all the way to monitoring specifically applications. So monitoring event logs and services and being notified when things are, um, are, are, are running into issues. And a lot of times, and I mentioned having that kind of monthly report earlier, a lot of times we'll update and fix things without our clients even noticing because we're um, so connected into this managed infrastructure that um, <clears throat> that we see, we know things are, are going to be risks before they even happen. We also provide backup and restore full replicated environments for disaster recovery. Um, and systems integration expertise for, now, Nudesic is a national systems integrator. We also are a front runner in the cloud strategies that Microsoft and the um, um, technology industry are coming out with. And so when it comes to what one of the big questions that come out of the conversations that we have with folks are, well, I really want it to feel to the end user like it could be on-premise, that there's nothing different between what they might experience on the internal network and what's sitting up in the cloud with a hosted SharePoint implementation. And that we've been building those experiences um, for the last seven, uh, seven years. And so we really um, bring that knowledge and expertise to the table to help make sure that the systems are truly integrated, not just connected through a hyperlink or an iframe, but really truly integrated. And so the data flows between the systems in a secure and scalable fashion. Um, and intranet, extranet, and internet deployments, our managed services team are focused on um, on helping customers do those. Whether they're you know whether it's on site and it doesn't really make sense to do a hosted um, uh, deployment, or also hosted hosted and uh, and cloud deployments as well. Um, uh, several of the people on that managed services team were responsible for performance testing, uh, Active Directory Federation services, Kerberos authentication, least privileges security testing, and capacity planning for the SharePoint product team at Microsoft. So these, some of these, these guys are the top-notch guys um, around the world. Now, so um, 
I think I will leave you guys with that and happy to answer any questions. Um, it was my pleasure to present some of the benefits around hosted SharePoint 2010 to you today. Um, we can go much deeper into uh, some of the feature sets in another webcast, or if you have questions, follow up with our, uh, with our team. Thank you, Simeon. That was an awesome presentation. I just want to remind everyone, I know some of you did come on later, to ask you questions, go up to the toolbar on the top left side of the screen, click on the Q&A verbiage, type in your question, and then click the Ask button. I'll just give it a few moments for anyone to type it in. And we also just want to point out that we do have all of our links to our social media sites, so stop by there for any details on upcoming events, webcasts, articles. We are very active on those sites, and we'd love to hear from all of you on them. All right, it seems like we do have a question. Will a recorded version of this webcast be available? And I'll actually answer that. Yes, it will. We send out a recording to everyone, and we also post it on our website as well. So everyone who's registered for this webcast will receive the link. Let's give it another moment. I just want to say thank you again for everyone for being so patient with us while we figured out what was going on with our live meeting. We really appreciate that you still joined us for a webcast, even with all of our technical difficulties. All right, if there's no further questions, I would like to thank you again, and please feel free to email Simi and Kathy with any questions, and have a great day. We look forward to seeing you on our next webcast. You're now free to disconnect. Thank you.